Well, we're still working on the Connie project. Right. <laughs> um, just to get everybody caught up, we're building three, or rebuilding really, three of these Bachman outside frame consolidations, better known as the Connie. Right. This is a really popular locomotive with the large scale community. And so we had the idea to rebuild one of these things. And then our good friend Don Hendrickson said, well, he wanted to rebuild one of these things <laughs> and detail it out. And then we found another one. So all of a sudden we, we find ourselves rebuilding three of these. Oh my goodness. Don and I both want to do this locomotive. Oh, number 34. Number 34, Silverton Northern. We love the Silverton Northern. Oh, yes. And just Silverton in general. Right. Anyway, this is, uh, the, the Bachman is a close approximation of this locomotive. This week, we're working on a couple of the details. This uh, air tank, which the locomotive has, and this uh, protective guard here. It's kind of a hinged guard that keeps the coal from dumping all over that and then the uh, airlines that run from that tank down to the air brake system. Interesting. There's a few other details that we're adding this week. You know we're almost done with this project. We are. <laughs> <laughs> we're kind of getting down to the final details here. One of which is the number board here on the front of the locomotive. The headlight used to be mounted here. And I raised the headlight up so that it matches uh, the headlight position on number 34. And then that means that it needs a, a number board in the middle of the, of the smoke box. Which I think looks a lot better there. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Now, our plan had always been to find someone who could laser etch us a number board. Uh -huh. And Don found a company that made these. Uh, yeah, well. so we said, well, probably not. But our good friends down at Delvey's Plastics are open again after being closed for the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do laser etching. And so we took some files down and they burned us eight of these guys. Oh, neat. And they turned out pretty darn nice. They're nice. So now the, the goal was, how do we paint these? <laughs> right, that's pretty tiny. <laughs> so you took some and painted them, and I took some and painted them, and Don took some and painted them. And then we said, well, who's come up with the, the best looking paint job? I decided to try putting the gold on first, and so I airbrushed the gold on and then came back and painted in the black. You worked the other way around, yep. putting the black on first and then the gold. And there's, there's the two, and frankly, of the two, I think yours came out better. Oh, dear. So what I did is I just threw them all down on the tabletop, and without knowing which ones are which, I said, okay, I like this one right here. And that's the one in the middle row all the way to the right, and that's now the number on the locomotive. There it is. I have no idea which one it no, is. No, me neither. <laughs> and then Don whipped up two of these mounting plates on his lathe. Nice. And so we, we've got one and he's got one. And then it was just a matter of attaching the, uh, the laser etched number to the mounting board. And uh, there it is, the finished version right there. I sure like the looks of that. It turned out really nice. Okay, next up are these lubrication lines that go into the valve chest here. And um, I, I didn't want to use the original Bachmann's because these don't look anything like the original Bachmann's. So I made my own. Oh, neat. Look at that. It turned out really nice, and it's really, really a simple system. The two sides end up being a little tiny bit different from each other because the, the line itself has to be routed differently. But where they attach to the valve chest is exactly the same. So I started by taking uh, two different copper tubes that telescope inside of each other and uh, setting that up so that it would mount into the valve chest. And then I soldered the two together, silver bearing solder. Oh, isn't that neat? And then I had to slightly enlarge the hole in the valve chest to make that fit correctly. And then I took a, a nut, just a really small nut that I had found online. I bought a bag of these at some point in time from a, a guy in China. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but they fit neatly over that wire. And then again, I silver soldered that in place and then simply bent the wire into the necessary shape for the, for the line. 
this side on the fireman side of the locomotive it's a lot more intricate it bends all over the place oh dear but I think it turned out quite nice. I like the looks of it. Uh, it's, it's sharp. Anyway, on to the next part of the project, and that's that big air tank that goes on the back of the tender. Oh, my. And so, of course, we started over at Home Depot in search of plumbing parts. Exactly. <laughs> what, what works better than plumbing? Yeah, so we, we found some various sizes of PVC over there, and then you found these, uh, these door poles. Yeah, they go on a sliding closet door. <laughs> and they fit perfectly in inside the pipe so we thought okay there's the ends of the air tank and there's the air tank and now I need to wrap the air tank in a thin uh, plastic this is evergreen plastic and I wanted to wrap that around there uh, I think it takes paint a little bit better but mostly what I was after was a thin edge yes because on the actual tank you can see the exposed edge of the sheet metal the the metal that makes up the tank and so by wrapping this around the PVC, I can get that thin exposed edge. Oh, neat. And then I needed to create the uh, concave inside section there. And so I went to my old friend, Green Stuff. Oh, there you go. That two-part uh, epoxy that you blend together from the, the, the blue and the yellow, and it makes green. And I just kind of smoothed that down inside there. That's a neat idea. And then I used Archer rivet decals. They're sort of tricky to work with. Oh, I would imagine. <laughs> I, I always end up going, ah, after putting these on. But they turned out quite nicely. And then manufactured the, the little brackets that hold the whole tank in place and some uh, brass wires to wrap around that, which is exactly the way the, the original tank was held down with, with round rods. Oh, neat. And then this... Uh, shield guard whatever it is at the back of the coal load that keeps the coal from dumping out onto the top of the air tank right now i needed to make the airlines that go into the tank oh. and i bought these castings from ozark miniatures mm -hmm. and drilled them out and very carefully put the the uh brass wires in there it was enormous amount of work and kind of fragile uh, but it turned out okay oh good and then when I showed the pictures to Steve, he said, you know, there's a much easier way to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, we'll get back to the easy way. Anyway, I got some uh, paint on here so that I could uh, set it in place, make sure everything's going to fit just fine. And boy, does it look nice on it there. It looks great. So I'm very, very happy with that. I added a little bit of, of weathering to the top of it and dialed it in a little bit. There'll be final weather is the very final process in the whole locomotive. But there's the air tank all ready to go. Nice. Now, where the airlines go over the side of the tender and down along the side of the tender, I wanted to use Steve's very simple and strong system, and there it is. <laughs> Isn't that something? So he just bends the wire to shape and then uh, strips some insulation off of uh, an appropriate sized wire and slides the little pieces of insulation onto the wire, and there's the joint. Isn't that something? It looks just like a, a plumbing elbow. <laughs> exactly. Once it's painted, it looks exactly like the ones I did with the Ozark castings. And right. it, it's much stronger, and it took just, uh, it took me about an hour to make up the whole thing. Right. Where I spent two days working on the other one, and I can't even imagine trying to make these complicated lines doing the other no, system. No, it wouldn't even be strong. And you can't even see the most complicated part of these airlines, and that's that they have to snap in place. Oh, because if I want to be able to remove the tender shell, which I do, they have to be removable. So they're not permanently mounted. I made them so that they just snap in place and they're, they're removable. Wow. So making those out of castings would have been impossible. Right. Okay, the next item are these removable wood boards that keep the coal load in place. And then as the fireman shovels coal out, these boards are removed one at a time to expose more and more of the coal load. This is what came delivered on the locomotive from Bachman. Oh, nice and orderly. <laughs> but not what I had in mind. No, it wouldn't be that nice. It looks like a cast plastic part, frankly, yes. and so I wanted to make them out of wood. 
So I went through the scrap bin and found the appropriate size. It's good we have a big scrap bin. Oh, we use a lot of it. <laughs> we have all kinds of wood and plastic. It's just nice to have things on hand. Anyway, I found some wood in the scrap bin and then I cut it to the proper length and then distressed it with my knife and with the edge of a saw blade. Right, that would be really, I mean, distressed. Well, uh, on the locomotives, these things just get beat to crap. Oh, I would imagine. And so they really need to look distressed. I then stained them with my old friend uh, Watco Danish Oil in black walnut. Nice. I just use this for everything. It's just such a neat product. It works best if you put several different coats on. So I, I put the initial coat on and sort of let it dry and then two more coats and had it looking pretty much the way I wanted it to look. And so at that point, I started uh, adding coal weathering to it. Oh, man, it'd be a lot of coal dust. Oh, they'd be so filthy. Yep. And fortunately, as we go around to the different railroads, you have a habit of picking up chunks of coal. I know. I love to pick up coal. They keep saying, you're going to get dirty. It's like, yeah. I know. I know. Well, we, and then we grind it up. Yeah. Some of it we keep as souvenirs, and then some of it we grind up to use as coal loads and for weathering purposes. Exactly. And then the coal dust needs to be secured in place. My favorite has always been Tester's Dull Coat. Right. And it was off the market in the middle of the pandemic. And you found some. I found some for Christmas, yes. <laughs> it was my Christmas was present. Christmas I, present. I was so excited. Anyway, there they are, all finished and dull coated. And they look authentic. They look like the real deal, <laughs> exactly. ready to, to go into the locomotive. And uh, boy, did they turn out nice. Look there, at that. There it is. It's beautiful. It looks just like the real thing. Especially with the little crumbles falling between the cracks. That looks really authentic. Doesn't it? Okay, and now the actual coal load. I started with a layer of cinders from the roundhouse at Evanston. Right. Because we have like, I don't know, 150 pounds of this stuff. At least. <laughs> and grinding up the coal is a little bit more work. So I started by putting down a layer of cinders and then put the crumbled coal on top of that. Oh, neat. And then secured the whole thing in place with dilute white glue. Yes. Then some dull coat to cover up the shiny spots left by the white glue and a little bit of touch up here and there. And there's the finished coal load. I'll tell you what, as somebody that grew up around coal stoves, that looks real. Doesn't it? I just, and the, the boards, uh, the way the boards tie in and the way the whole thing, it's just, I, I'm really happy. Me too. It looks like a, a real live, honest to goodness coal tender. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, as I mentioned, I think we're down to just the final little details, and then it's, it's going to be three finished locomotives. Right. Uh, it's amazing. It is. <laughs> so you want to follow along with that, and the easy way to do that is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Are you right. ready for that? Zoink! Right there, that'll make you a subscriber. We're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you on Sunday. Right. With the regular Sunday show. <laughs> see, ya. see ya. Bye. Bye.